BMW Sprint World Cup, the opening race of the season, continues now from Innsbruck, Austria. Felix Locke just moments ago captured the men's singles competition, and now we get ready for the doubles. Hi again, everyone. Tim Singer along with John Morgan. John, normally we have this beautiful view of the track across the Innsbruck Valley and the Tyrolean Alps. Not so much the case today. Well, Tim, the expression, we're fogged in, I think, applies here. And, you know, there's the start where you see that, you know, they don't start when they come out of the start blocks. They start down here. That's the, the theme of the sprint, sort of uh, give people who are gliders a better chance to show their talents. And uh, But we saw the same guy who won the uh, men's competition. He went on to win the sprint. Um, but uh, here's our doubles lineup, Tim, and uh, you saw a lot of these guys yesterday. Yes, and I have every reason to believe that the Austrian team of Stoy and Kohler will be in a good position to fend off the Germans and win another race this weekend, just as Felix Locke did in men. Stoy and Kohler with Austria, they didn't win the relay, but they were by far the best sled out there, men, women, and doubles earlier today in the team relay. They'll be last to go, but we start things off with the Ukrainians, 15th yesterday in the World Cup, Yor Stakov and Andrei Lisetsky. And John, this start ramp and more particularly this left-hand turn at the lower start presents a lot of challenges for these sliders. Well, they come out of the blocks on the right side all the way down that straightaway. That wasn't the five-star start that you need on this very short track. Yeah, there's where the start is. Here we see that green, red. That's, you know, a 72 four miles an hour that gives you an idea how they negotiated that start ramp to that point yeah just 888 meters from the lower start that's uh, not much more than a half mile so you can't make a mistake there's nowhere to correct well you can't make a mistake from the top of the track which is 1240 meters i think it is tim it's a short track you know very easy to get down it's just difficult to get down with the best time 30 rabbits 30.608 for the Ukrainians. Ukraine earlier today had a pretty decent top seven result in team relay. And uh, in the early going here, John, we, uh, we're talking about all of the countries that are here, but there are several nations that are not on hand for this World Cup opener. Well, Canadians, Americans, I'm sure some of them are watching in. And uh, it's rumored to be coming back after the new year for all the sliding sports teams from North America. We hope. And now we set our attention veterans. back to the top of the track, the first of the Latvian sleds. And the only athletes remaining on the World Cup luge circuit dating back to the 2006 Olympics in really? Torino. They, they had an upset medal when they won a bronze medal there, right? They, well, they, they were a long shot. They, they won the bronze in Vancouver, oh, and Vancouver. then they came back with, or they won silver in Vancouver, then they came back with a bronze and a silver in the team relay in Sochi. So they have three Olympic medals. Hey, we talked about when the women's sprint, the uh, or the men's sprint, uh, how successful Latvia is. How about a... A little applause for our new FIL president, Mr. Fogelis, They're taking over for Josef Fent. Uh, so not only are the Latvians, this little small nation, very powerful in the sport, the new FIL president, the third ever, Einar Fogelis. So uh, good luck to Mr. Fogelis. No question about it. He was elected in last week at the virtual FIL Congress as the Sheik's brothers cross in a time of 30.209, four tenths of a second ahead of the Ukrainians, and let's see if Andres and Juris can have a better result than their 14th yesterday in the World Cup race. Yeah, Tim, I think that was a uh, disaster result for these two very successful athletes, and, uh, and we should also reach out to our good friend Dwight Bell, who's now the general secretary, too, of the FIL. Tim, you and I have been known Dwight since his competition days in the 80s. The Austrians, the first Austrian sled up now, the young tandem of Gott and Schulp. And John, uh, playing off your point, the international representation is amazing. You have a Latvian now as president of the Federation. You have an American as the uh, general, secretary general. Ooh. You have an Austrian, Schweiger, who's the executive director. You have an Italian, who's the sport director. And this is a federation based in Germany. So that's great international representation. And our sport director's a female. So it's an even better gender mix. And, uh, but again, uh, 
Boosh, very diverse. You know, and uh, you know, again, here they added this sprint competition, you know, a decade ago or so, Tim. And uh, again, not an Olympic sport, but uh, you know, how creative they were to get team in. And if you look at the team, Boosh, ooh, 2800s back. Yes, if that had been the relay, they would have been hard pressed to hit that paddle. Paddle, yeah, they were skidding there in the uphill section. But, uh, but the team has uh, set the bar. I mean, you, now you have, uh, you know, you have mixed team and biathlon. And uh, so, uh, Luz, great job getting that team event in. And Tim, I got more people talk to me about the team event than almost any of the sliding sports. People really like that paddle exchange relay type thing, you know, and uh, a lot of fun. And for years, it was considered perhaps a little too dangerous to stage that. But uh, somehow they've made that happen. And it certainly, it's paid dividends. Now, here's the second of the three Latvians. Oscar Skudramovic and Pateras Collins. And John, I gotta believe as we look ahead that the sprint may have a life for a while, but the chances for the Olympic inclusion are probably much better for the new discipline of women's doubles than it would be for this sprint. Absolutely. Anything to do with gender equality and uh, that brings more females into the competition and, uh, you know, and, uh, skeleton. The, the uh, IBSF brought in a uh, mixed skeleton last year, which is just a uh, men and women's skeleton combination, which was staged at the World Championships, which is pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, anything to do with gender equality, I think, Tim, has a lot to do with uh, bringing sports forward. Well, it's Latvia 1-2 in the standings right now, separated by 17 hundredths of a second as the Sheik's brothers continue to hold on to the top spot. And, John, they did have a women's doubles competition Last year at the Youth Olympics on the natural track in San Moritz, and it was a big success. Yeah, and uh, I think the first women doubles team we saw compete was at a World Cup in Worcester. Some two young Canadian athletes, female athletes, uh, competed in the doubles field, and that was, uh, I think, in 2018 right, or in 19. Whistler. That's correct. Whistler. Yeah, so. Uh, well, uh, speaking of Youth Olympic doubles teams, they're the gold medalists in boys doubles last year in San Moritz. Welcome to the World Cup, Hannes Aramunder and Paula Gobitz. Well, the Germans just keep putting these great sliding sports athletes forward. And there's the, the lights, so now they're off and running. 72.7 kilometers is I think the best speed we've seen so far. 11th place finish yesterday in their World Cup debut. We expect to see the Winterberg duo of Goyaka and Gom back at some point this year on the World Cup. It's not quite the same without Robin and Goyaka cracking jokes around the track. Well, 800's back from the two formidable Latvians. And they're 900. They lost a bit more time in the way down. So the most experienced team in the field that's gone down so far is our leader team. No question about it. And uh, as you mentioned, what happened yesterday to the Latvians was perhaps an anomaly for a team. They're older, the Latvians leading the way, but uh, they're still so good with their first two World Cup victories just last season. Okay, so the Germans are down and now we get ready for a pair of Russian squads led by Vladislav Yushikov and Yuri Pokorov. Yushikov, the top man, a veteran of this sport at 34 years old. He had a long career, including Olympic appearances, with a different partner before hooking in with Prokhorov about five seasons ago. Well, speed. W24, similar to the Germans who just came down. 300 spots on this track. There's a lot of times, a little drift there on a nine, Tim, I didn't like that. See what they can do for speed down here in the three-quarter combination, the labyrinths of which every track's got to have one. And down here, and they're tight, quick turns. And then all the steep uphill as you finish right there. The finish is so different. They, they used to stop in bobsledding to 76 frames and the Innsbruck Olympics right there. Yeah, I mean, I remember before they built this impressive finish house, these sleds used to hit this big pad. That's what stopped them, right? Tim, I, I competed here when we ran into tires at the end. Ugh. We didn't get, to, I was on the brakes. If you knew, you know, when you got done a couple trips down here, we're putting the brakes on. 
you uh, your arms were uh, pretty hurting that night because that was tough to stop the sled. Now they've extended it almost 80 meters out for safety. Andres and Joris Sheiks continue to lead for Latvia. Here is the next Russian team of Kashkin and Karshunov. They finished fourth at the World Championships last year. By far their best international result at a major competition. The youngest of the Russian teams, both these athletes, just 22 years old. You can see there they tied the best speed That's right. at the uh, trap entrance. So let's see what they can do. 300s back though. Ooh, right there, drift, hit, now they're in trouble, feet come out, and Sayonara on this chance for them, getting a 1,500s back, 160 kilometers, 74 miles per hour, and they're going to fight to stay in the top five. It has been an utterly forgettable opening weekend for the Russian Republic, a nation that was probably as strong as any, if Six. not stronger, all last year. Thousand out of fifth, but... Uh, Mistake a nine, which is the pivotal part of the track. There it is, nice replay. You watch him drift to the right, look at I watch his foot come out too. Now he's like unsure of himself. Oh, now what do I do? And it's over then. This sport, thousandths of a second. That's probably two tenths right there, Tim. Andres and Joris Sheiks of Latvia continue to lead. They're the veteran Latvians. Here now are the young Latvians. Martin Spots, Roberts Puma, they were in fifth place after the first run yesterday. They fell back to eighth, but a sensational debut nonetheless for this Latvian team. How many times are we going to say another Latvian team? Uh, Tim, up in Latvia, the World Cup opposite event after the first heat, unbelievably, Francesco Friedrich leads. He just broke the track record again. You know, so the Germans are doing good up on that track, too. And this young Latvian team, as you said, Tim, had a pretty good debut yesterday. Out of curve 10, now to the lower S's. The speed at 66.7 miles an hour. That is a mile and a half an hour slower than their leading teammates. And as a result, they are Way back in, the back. in seventh place. Yeah. Never got it going, Tim, top to bottom. You know, uh, so important to have that speed up top. They didn't have that. Didn't see the mistakes down below. A little late there, so they're coming off the exit of the, I think, number 12. I think it's 11, 12, and 13. You can tell just in their walk. But their teammates are, have been in the leader's box. That's a good strategy, Tim. Post a good time, get in the leader's box. Catch me if you can. I have seen the first off in the sprint in the past win the race, spending a lot of time in the leader's box. Okay, three Italians in a row. Yesterday they finished fifth, sixth, and seventh. Seventh place going to this pair, Ivan Nagla and Fabian Malaya. 72-6 speed, only trailing by a tenth of a kilometer. Ooh, wrong side of that straightaway there. That'll cost them on the exit of nine to the big 10. Now 11, 12, and 13. Speed's decent, 900's back though, still could be top three. They're keeping it close. Here come the Italians a little high under 17. that finish curve and that cost quite a bit at the very end of this run. Third, fifth, Tim. I think you're right, that finish curve might have cost them. This, they get off to the right side here, this is wrong. See, he had to bring his head back up and had to re-steer. And he's, he's going right, he's going from the left side of the track to the right center of the track. And, you know, that's not the straight line. And when you're dealing with thousands of a second, it speaks for itself. Okay, a pair of former singles competitors who teamed up at the start of last year to try out doubles, Emmanuel Rita and Simone Kainzwaldner, no longer just trying it out. They're a very respectable team. In fact, they were in second place yesterday after the first run, ended up in sixth. Cohesion, speed, start, not very good. Ninth best speed, so this young Italian team, sort of an experiment. You get two singles guys together like this. Uh, they got a lot in their plate here to try and get the top five. Great sound of these sleds. Maybe that's not necessarily a good thing in this sport. We're off. Good. The quieter, the faster. Doing pretty good, Tim. To the finish, just 400s of a back. second. Yeah, so second place. That's great. Their speed was way off at the start. So these two singles guys, 
One and one makes two, and uh, they're doing well. And they first were, season out of the, is this their first season of competition? Tim? No, this is their second, full second season, season together. But they've both been around for about nine or ten years, going back as far as the uh, the 2012 Youth Olympic Games when they were singles competitors. Well, you know, in bobsledding, there's two man, four man, and luge. This is the team event luge. Of course, then you have the team event with the two men and women in doubles. All right, they set off Reeder and Rassner pretty quickly. They're already through the Chrysler. The clock is already going, and their speed was wow. 45 points. They've got a lead, too. Their speed wasn't the best, but they immediately are into green numbers. Drift out of the curve 9 into 10. Looks like 10's a good exit into the labyrinths. They're 2,000th of a second back. They could find a fast line here in the finish. Should be a top three for sure. On their home track, second 100. place. So only a hundredth separate the top two, only four hundredths separate the top three, and less than a tenth of a second separating the top four. It's Latvia, Italy, and Italy. By the way, John, earlier today, the Italians were disqualified in the team relay competition, so this pair, Reeder and Lassner, did not have the chance to take part as they were waiting at the top. Now, the Tobies. Yeah, well, this is another formidable pair here, Tim. Four-time Olympic gold medalists, doubles and team, 2014 and 2018. The Bayern Express, the two Tobies. Ooh, a little Ooh, shaky in that start round. they really cut on that corner differently. Let's look at the speed. See if that 72.5, well, top seven speed. But uh, these two know their way down these ice canals for sure. That numbers. Close. Kind of like exit 10 to see it. Oh, no. the 900's back, Tim, so they're going to fight for a top three unless they find some fire and express angle here. Tobias Bendel and Tobias off to the finish. Fourth place. Four. All of these split times are so tight. Now, Tim, I think that exit of the the, at the start, that looked weird. Looks like to me like they cut too much ice coming around that curve. See it, but uh, down here, tough to really say where they did end up in wrong. I think it was up at the start because that looked weird coming around that curve. Well, they will not win their 45th World Cup. They're the all-time World Cup leaders with 44. And just behind them in the overall World Cup count with 43 career victories, are these Germans, Tony Egert and Sasha Benekin, the defending World Cup and world champions. One is an airplane pilot, the other is an avid musician and guitar player, and they are, on balance, the best doubles team in the world over the past five seasons. They just tied the best speed, too, so this could be some challengers. Those sick brothers have been living down there in that leader's box since the, you know, the second sled off the track. This is red to green. In, in the, into the red now. This is for the first podium spot of the day. Just five thousandths of a second. Back. Ooh, they're in trouble. What happened? Exit of 10 into 11. It looks like they try to cheat. They're back on the sled. They will finish, but ooh, now there's some bumps and bruises. Let's see them get up around the curve. They're, they finished, of course, way off. But uh, Tim, looks like they, you know, it was five thousandths out of the lead on the exit of 10. Here, look at that. They came out too early. It's been really the one. 11, exit of 11. That's what got them. So it looks like they got into 11 too late. Boy, you don't expect that out of a team with this much experience. No, it's been really one of the only negative marks this weekend for Germany, this great world championship team. But uh, I've been look told. At, look at the athletes. Look at the respect. I mean, nobody wants to see this. Uh, such a family here and in this sport. I, I've been told, John, from some of the athletes we were watching yesterday that, that Tony and Sasha just don't look that comfortable yet. Keep in mind, Sasha's been battling with a neck injury, and that's not an easy thing to just hop back on that sled. Both of them tested positive for COVID during the summer. They quickly recovered, which was great news. But you got to wonder what a, you know how that affected you emotionally. Well. He had a neck issue before. He's going to have one now. And they're going to have to be in a hot tub someplace because there's a lot of black and blues associated with what they just did. 
Well, it's great to see they're okay. The Sheiks of Latvia have guaranteed a podium spot. Two now remain, both from the home country of Austria. Here are Yannick Mueller and Armin Frauscher, another pair of former singles competitors who are now competing in doubles. Cut that corner. Pretty convincingly also. Speed, not good. Four kilometers down, that's about two and a half miles an hour. Now this is one of those bottom gaining teams that find the speed down below. Speed merchants. Tim, we call those guys speed merchants. Let's see if they can, if they can do it. Red numbers. Comes 10. Entrance to 11. Clean. Uh, way back. This is a, maybe a top seven, top eight, maybe. Clean run. 1300 back. This is going to be interesting, John, with the final sled Six. still to come. Because Shoy and Kohler were so much the class of the field yesterday in the race. But they, they've got to be wondering what's going on with these last several sleds. Of course, the Germans crashed, but this Austrian team did not. Yeah, they didn't have a very good exit of 10, Tim, but uh, they didn't have a very good start, and they gave, gave themselves no opportunity to uh, get in the top three with that run. Now Tomas Stoy and Lorenz Pola. They came all the way back yesterday against all odds. Awful broken leg injury last year for the top man Stoy. They missed the entire second half of the year after podium several times in the first half. Best speed. They own this track, John. Well, when you have the best speed at the top of the track, you most likely have the best opportunity to win at the bottom. They won yesterday, Tim. This is their home track, but his head's up. He wasn't comfortable on the exit of nine. Still green numbers. Three hundreds. This is going to be tight right to the finish. Stoy and Kohler looking for their second victory of the weekend. And like they Felix got it Locke, going away. Like Felix Locke in the men's race, Stoy and Kohler in the doubles make it two for two on this opening weekend of the World Cup season. How can this, how can they feel right now, Tim, with the injury last year, missing the season the way they did, and to come out and win two golds in the first weekend? Well, you spend wow. the entire summer wondering if you're going to be okay. How are you going to do against Look the best head in the up. world? A little uncomfortable there in the 10, but you see him just a little bit of a peak. Then he set himself up good for the speed part of the track where they accelerated away. And uh, Jim, what, what they must feel like for what they went through last year. Tomas Stoy and Lorenz Kohler, two for two. Austria's only two victories so far this weekend on their home track with one race still to come, the women's sprint. Great picture. I'd like to know what their pulse rate is right now. Well, the only thing we know we're missing, John, unfortunately, are the, the, the roars of the Luge fans from yeah, Austria. Yeah, be here. They usually sit at, uh, right on the right side of the screen now where the bleachers are. Right, what a great setting it is down there, Tim, to be in that atmosphere. Great showing by the Latvians, 14th place yesterday, second today, and Reeder Rasner end up on the podium as well with a bronze medal. A great showing for Ludwig and Patrick back among the best in the world. The Tobies end up in fifth, and very unfortunately, the German team of Egert and Beneken, the two-time world champions who captured the worlds on this track 